Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmenter. I'd like to show you how to add optimistic concurrency to MongoDB and using .NET with a basically open source library that I recently published to NuGet. So let's look really quickly at that. First, you may have heard people complaining about MongoDB that it loses data or there's other types of things that can make it crash or become unreliable. And to a large degree, there's not a lot of credence to this. Um, there's a really great blog post by uh, Server Density here. Uh, you can see the link below. And they talk about all the things that people are doing wrong and sort of not following best practices. And I don't want to go back into that, but one of the complaints that people may have been able to raise is there's not a lot of sort of optimistic concurrency or any sort of concurrency control other than access to a single document in the database is atomic. But if I get something from the database and I make a change and I try to push it back and somebody else uh, in the meantime has changed that, that document, well, it's probably just going to write right over top of it. So what we want to do is we want to see how we can add a level of security that is very, very similar to what Entity Framework uh, has as well when it's talking to SQL Server. So the way Entity Framework, Link to SQL, and some of these other libraries worked is what they do is they'll look at a particular field or a set of fields and try to, when they save their data back, they'll make sure that the original data that they got from the database is still the current state that's in the database. And that, if that's the case, it'll save it. If that's not the case, it'll throw an exception and say there's been a concurrency exception. You need to stop and you're about to overwrite some data and then there's certain ways in which you deal with that basically. Do you decide to lose the server changes, lose your changes, you can present a dialogue to the user and so on. So let's add exactly that level of safety to MongoDB. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and install the mongodb.kennedy.concurrency package out of NuGet. So what I wanna do is just switch over really quickly to Visual Studio. Here you can see I have a C-sharp program, console app about ready to go. So let's just go create this really quick. And it's just from scratch. There's nothing special that I did here. And let's just go to NuGet, say Manage Packages, and we can search for mongodb.kennedy. There it is. So here's the library, and you see it depends on the Mongo uh, C Sharp driver, which is the official 10 gen C Sharp, Sharp, C -sharp driver. This is the one that has link support and is sort of the official way to talk to MongoDB. So what we're going to do is build on top of this and add uh, optimistic concurrency in the fashion I described. So we have to accept their license because we're installing their content. All right, see we downloaded those. And when it uh, finishes, I open up this uh, readme file for you here that tells you basically the steps that we're going to go through. So we don't need that because we're doing it together. So let's go over here and suppose we have a models folder, data or something like that. And let's just say we want to create a little bookstore, something super simple. So let's create a book class. Now we could go ahead and save and load this and maybe it's got a, uh, a couple of pieces here like um, a string name and maybe it's got a property of type integer which is page count and you know ISBN, all the various properties. We're going to need some kind of primary key in MongoDB, and that's typically this thing called an object ID. Additionally, in order to implement optimistic concurrency, we need another field that sort of stores the original state. So this is all gathered up into an iMongo entity from my library, as you can see there. So we're going to import the namespace and then implement it. And of course, this uh, is probably not the way we want to implement it. Let's do it like this. There we go. So we're going to have just two additional uh, properties here. This is the primary key, and this is a field that we could more or less ignore, but the underlying framework, the underlying uh, classes use that to determine if something's been modified uh, behind its back. All right, so now this uh, object is ready to be saved and loaded from the database. But just like Entity Framework Code First or any of these other patterns, we have to have sort of a data context class so let's go over here and add a new class. Our next step will be to add a class that we call data context or uh, DB context or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter. And this is going to derive from concurrent uh, data context. Uh, oops, get that to come up. All right. Now this is the thing that does all the magic. Right. This class. This class. Uh, 
will work with that access ID and primary key and basically make sure that everything stays safe. And ReSharper is telling us that there's no default constructor. We've got to pass in the database name here. So let's generate one, but we're going to keep this uh, simpler than what you see on the screen here. So we're always going to use safe mode. Don't want to ever not do that. So let's just uh, take the uh, the base class is a uh, assumption that we always want to use safe mode and we'll uh, have an optional server name and of course you have to pass the database all right so that's all good there and then the last thing we were going to need is we need to be able to somehow access uh, the classes using link and that sort of stuff so let's create some properties that are iQueryable so let's create a property of iQueryable of book right that's one of the things we want to do and let's call that uh, books seems great to me and we're going to get it like this. I want to say return this dot db dot get collection of book, and we have to give it a name. So let's just say type of. I'll just call it book for now. We'll just call it the same as the type name, book dot as queryable. Okay, so that will let us uh, return something that we can run queries against. I'm not really sure I'm a big fan of this wrapping. There we go. Just with the huge fonts for the recording. All right, so now we're going to be able to do link queries against this. And this also has some save and delete methods. All right, save is kind of an update and insert, depending on the, the status of your object that you've gotten back from the database. So that is it. We can now go start talking to MongoDB using this. So let's go over here and write a little program. Let's say um, uh, book. Int. I guess we can just start like this. Say uh, book, first book. Let's create a DB context. And let's give it a database uh, name of like concurrency test or something like that, right? Okay. And we got to make our constructor public, which is great. And this will be context.books. And we can just run some link queries. Let's say first or default. And then we probably don't have any data because you can see I'm just making this stuff up as we go. So we want to check if it's null. Let's go ahead and create a book. And so we'll do this. We'll say uh, first book equals new book. First book dot uh, name. Let's just call this uh, the book. The book. And first book. Let's say this thing has uh, 100 pages. If I could type, sorry about that. 100 pages. And then let's save it. Say save book. Okay. Uh, first book. And then let's just um, come on and tell us what is your problem. Okay. And then let's see. Let's go ahead and return and say um, console write line created new book. So that should go ahead and insert it and the very first time we run it. But then afterwards, we should start getting this back from the database. Just want to keep it you know, one scenario at a time. So let's go over here. Let's say something like this. Um, let's edit the book and let's show the title here. We'll say uh, first book dot name. Let's say uh, something like this. Console dot uh, write, but not write line. Um, enter a new title and we'll say string let's just say this first book dot name equals console dot read line okay and then let's go ahead and try to save this so we'll just say context dot save first book so what we've done is we've gone over here and we've gotten the book from the database we said, okay, let's take a moment to do some user input and let's change it and then save it back. But what if somebody else changed it while we're waiting, right? We'll run two instances of this and we'll see that one of them is going to work and one of them is not going to work. All right, so let's go ahead and run this first. Should talk to MongoDB. Be up and running. Okay, so it created a new book. Run it again. It's going to show me a book. It says, let's edit the book, title of the book. And for the first time, let's just run this straight through to make sure everything works. This will be... Um, a fancy new title and if I save that it saved it let's go and run it. it should now say edit a book with a fancy new title and we can even see this if we switch over here to our uh, management tools if I refresh this thing is a pretty awesome little app called RoboMongo 
And here's our concurrency test, our collection, our books, and let's just say view documents. Here we can pull this up and look at it. So here's our primary key. That should be familiar if you're used to doing Mongo. Here's our properties that we changed. And here is this access ID, which is sort of a randomly generated type of ID uh, by the library that I've put into NuGet that we're deriving from. Okay, so if you see if I run this again and I make some more changes, let's go ahead and uh, run it one more time. That probably would have worked. I forgot to give it a title, but it needs a new title now. We come back over here. You should see this number change when I refresh it. So let's just refresh, and now it's a totally different number. So as long as we're just editing one app, this is all great. But let's suppose we're going to run it twice. So here's one instance of it. And let's get that over to the side. And let's run another. So this first one, um, this is the first. This is the second. Now, whichever one saves the data first is going to be the one that wins. So maybe the second one saves it. And because nobody's changed it behind the scenes, it's all good. But this one is going to try to save it. The underlying uh, library we got from NuGet is going to detect that there's been trouble. And of course, it's going to crash. And I didn't catch that exception, hence this kind of error. But it says the entity is modified by another writer since being retrieved from the database. So there we have it. This is exactly the same uh, behavior you see from uh, libraries like Entity Framework. And this whole concept is called optimistic concurrency. Let's just get it from the database, assume it's going to be able to be saved back. And if something goes wrong, like somebody's changed it, then we'll have special uh, mechanisms for interacting with that. Like we can tell the user, hey, someone's changed it. Or maybe we could extend the library to have a way to go, you know what, write over it anyway, things like that. Anyway, that's how that works. Let me review a few things really quick with you. Switch over here. All right, so we did a couple of things. We went to our project and created a new app. We installed mongodb.kennedy.concurrency via NuGet, which of course depends on the C-sharp driver. <clears throat> so we uh, downloaded that, uh, both of them, installed it. We were ready to go. Second thing we did is we created some entities, top-level entities, and they implement iMongo entity. So that's two properties, object ID, underscore ID, and then this access ID for sort of a last changed uh, record. We created a data context class, just like um, any framework code first or something like that might do. And we added some queryable properties, just like this get collection of book. Okay. And then we access our data via link. In this case, we're just doing the like first or first or default, right? You could do much more complex link queries uh, because it is link. So that's great. We changed our data and then we just call save and if it works you know if nobody's changed it it's going to save successfully but if somebody has changed the data while you're at it it's not going to override it but rather it'll throw a, uh, an exception and warn you that it's been changed all right finally uh, if you'd like to learn more about this stuff we're going to have a class at learning line which is uh, learninglineapp.com on mongodb and nosql for .NET developers and this content will very likely be featured in it so hopefully you guys can check it out so uh, thanks for watching stay in touch you can find my blog my twitter my google plus all right there uh, like i said i'm with developmentor and also authoring classes like this one uh, this content on mongodb that's going to be on learninglineapp.com so thanks for coming bye